Hey, welcome back. We've been talking through the major ideas for a physics course for an entire year, and right now we're in the middle of a vibrations and waves unit, and I want to talk a little bit more about sound waves today, including something called harmonics. So this has to do with string instruments here. I'll do another part to this series where I talk about other types of instruments like oboes and flutes and clarinets and how they all work. But let's go ahead and get started with this. So first of all, I do want to remind you of where we have been and what we mean by a wave reflection. And so if you have a wave coming in, it will reflect and it depends as to what kind of a boundary you have here in terms of what happens next. So if this is able to slide up and down, like if you have a rope that is very loosely connected to, let's say, a ring stand right here, and it's able to slide up and down, then that wave will reflect back and be on the same side that it came back in. It'll just be reflected back, that's all. But that's actually not what we're talking about today, because in this case that we're talking about today, we're going to be talking about a guitar. Now a guitar is actually fixed at both ends. And so it's fixed at this end of the guitar. It, it's tied down over here in these parts right here and at the far end of the guitar. When the player pushes down on the strings, what's happening is he's shortening the length of the string that is vibrating. This is the vibrating part of the string right here. But this actually does mean, though, that we have a fixed position on both ends of the string. Now what happens is, is if you get a wave coming in, and it's fixed at the ends, then there's a Y component to the wave, a up and down version of that. It will try to push up on the fixed position here. Nothing is going to give, and so there is a reactive force that pushes down on the string. And as a result, this wave gets inverted as it interacts with the fixed position over here. So it's like it pushes up on something that's immovable. That immovable thing pushes back down on it. And as a result, it gets flipped and it will be on the opposite side of the middle axis. We say that the wave is inverted after it interacts with the fixed boundary. All right, so once you have these waves going forward and going backwards, start interfering with each other. Now you get a more complex situation because if you happen to have the wave of just the right frequency and just the right wavelength, and they are the same for the wave going forward as well as the wave going backwards, they interact with each other and they can start to form these patterns. These patterns where you notice if it's going fast enough, it almost looks like one object that's just, if you've ever looked at a close-up for a guitar string as you pluck it, it'll vibrate back and forth so fast that you can see this top edge of the vibration and the bottom edge of the vibration. And you know that it's one string, but it looks like it's almost like a blend of a string as it goes back and forth. And that's a special kind of wave. It's called a standing wave. It's called a standing wave because it appears to stand still. And we're going to be talking about those today. But the way they come about, it's important to understand, the way they come about is because of a wave moving in this direction and a wave moving backwards in this direction and them interfering with each other constructively here, in this case, where you get a really wide amplitude right here. And then you would get other patterns as well. These other patterns would have constructive interference here, constructive interference here. This would be a destructive interference point where the crest of one wave cancels out the trough of another wave, that kind of thing. And so we've got a special name for that location. Those are called nodes. And these locations where you have the maximum displacement is going to be called an anti-node right here. All right, so let's visualize this in another sense. This was the image I was thinking of when I was thinking of a vibrating string from a guitar right here. And this is kind of what I meant. You can see the string vibrating so much that it appears like a blur and it'll form a shape. This is going to show a standing wave with the black superposition wave that's formed. And here's our formal definition of what we mean by a standing wave. So it's a wave pattern that forms from two waves of the same amplitude, frequency, and wavelength that are traveling in opposite directions and interfering with each other, either constructively or destructively, depending on where they are. But I just want you to look at why that is. If you see the red wave and the blue wave passing each other, and you let it sink in for a little bit, and given the training that we've had so far, hopefully you can notice that that black wave is the resultant wave of those 
two other waves, the red and the blue wave. And if that's the case and this was moving fast enough, it would appear like this would be a blur. This black line would be almost like a blur, kind of like this image over here would be a blur as well. That blurred wave function that doesn't appear to be moving at all is what's called a standing wave. And just to clarify a couple terms here, so the points at which the standing wave has no amplitude is going to be called a node. So there are multiple nodes here. Notice, yep, you could say the ends are called nodes as well, but this is going to be a node here. This is a node here, and this is a node here. So I'm going to show you with labels where our nodes are here. And so that would be where you have the maximum destructive interference happening, where there's essentially no amplitude as a result of the two interfering waves that cause the standing wave and if you look there's the opposite as well the opposite is where we're going to have things called anti nodes and anti nodes are going to be where you have the maximum amplitude for the resulting wave so you could say that's where you have the maximum constructive interference happening all right and rather than taking too long in one video i'm going to break right here for this video after we've covered these topics and move into the next section with my next video so please stick around for the next video Hopefully this has been helpful, and if you have any comments down below, please let me know. Take care.